Hey everyone, and welcome to the stories of weird. <laughs> I tried not to burp. I saw that. No, it was great. It was great. It hurt. Oh man! And then I thought the audio cut out because you're all. And that's the no. face you make, Justin, when you're gonna do every like weird, like <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, see, because we'll need... get it right. Up I need to hear Corey do one because I feel like I've just been doing my own thing with you no, know I, with you, Victoria. I had to burp and I wasn't trying to do it over top of the the other thing. <laughs> I pulled it in and then wanted to go say something. Didn't. didn't <laughs> you should have just let it. You know, you should have just let it happen. Just yeah, it probably would have been really weird. You know? it. Yeah, a yeah. little bit. Well, no, not that no, weird. It probably not wouldn't that have weird. felt good though. Yeah. 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 I mean, now if like it was you know, a more virtual kind of burp, like if it came with a little bit of punch, then it'd be a little weird. I mean, I, I don't want to see, like, projectiles. I, mean, I personally don't. The viewers may. If yeah, they're still I, around. I don't need my microphone covered in dingleberries. This is true. Dingleberries. This is true. Anyway, dingleberries. welcome to the Stories of Weird. It's the video podcast where weird people give weird commentary about weird things. I'm your host, Weston, with my co-host, Corey. Jonas. <laughs> and Victoria. Hey there. <laughs> and the podcast is divided into two sections. Our first section is Would it be strange or weird if, where we find two nouns and a verb, put them in a sentence and dis discuss whether it would be something strange or weird and if it could actually happen. And then our second part is just all of us telling a story, a weird story from the internet that we have found in the last week. So with that, let us move on to our first segment and let's try to find some good nouns, huh? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to find some good nouns. We're going to do it. They're going to be actual nouns. They won't be nouns that are fake nouns. <laughs> That's, that is the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So our first noun is hospital. Hospital. <laughs> for, you, for you English speakers, that's hospital. By the way. <laughs> I know it sounds nothing like it, but hospital is <laughs> is hospital. And then our second, or yeah, our second noun is underwear. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> our I don't favorite. know if this is sounding weird yet, you know. Oh no! I mean, this sounds like I'd put those two nouns together <gasps> any day. All right, um, and our verb. No, I'm not using that verb again. I'm going to use yeah. our next verb, Sparkle. which is attack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Would it be weird if hospitals attacked underwear? <laughs> Would it be weirder if um, underwear attacked hospitals? Wouldn't be a, isn't that an episode I, of Doctor Who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, I, I, I the underwear it. people. <laughs> is that really some? Is that really really an episode? No. Yeah, oh, okay. Weston. Right. You know, it was. Don't even start. Corey, if we're going to work together, no, no. Okay, <laughs> we need to keep this up. Corey, I, I appreciate that you told me the truth right off the bat. I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, the only thing I remember was there was one people that looked like they had diapers on their head. I do remember that in one of the yeah. older episodes. And I don't remember they were like some kind of book. They probably or... were diapers, you know. I just I just want to say that, Weston, we, we should start marking how many times we mentioned something BBC because that went straight to Doctor Who and that was my fault. Well, it's not our fault, though, because Doctor Who 50th anniversary is right around the corner. So, this is yeah. true. Or this is actually fact. has happened by the no, time this is airs. So, Yeah. I believe. Yeah. So, okay. Well, you know, time travel. Right. <laughs> -da. Anyway, so with, <laughs> <laughs> with that. Anyways. So hospitals attacking underwear. Yeah, so I think it makes more sense for underwear to attack hospitals. I think like protesters or something. Like we don't believe in your your Western medicine and just like tossing. tossing I don't know because like okay, so I've got I've got two little conundrums with this. The first is that I when you say like a hospital attacking underwear, I mean I just see nurses going get it off of them and like just like jaws of life <laughs> peeling underwear. Oh, you know? oh. But the more I think about it. That's true, because, like, they need you. Like, when you get to the hospital, your clothes, they give the whole scissors thing. Like, and they just, what? I mean, they do attack. They attack all of your clothes. 
and all well, your underwear. Nobody put you in that like corset gown thing, and then it's breezy because the back's wide open. That's what it is. They after don't want the, you to have they underwear. Your underwear. Exactly. They're just like, no, 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 no. We're just gonna put you in the embarrassing gown. That's like a paper like towel that you know has sleeves. Ah, you Enjoy. want to see my back hair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then my, my second conundrum is that, like, does anybody else's mother tell them, you know, always make sure you're wearing, you know, clean underwear? Not just because aesthetically and, you know, health reasons, um, but because if you were to be in an accident, you would want, you know, the paramedics <laughs> to see you in clean underwear. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm pretty sure, though, like, what if what if this is true? What if they attack oh, your underwear because the they know underwear. it's awful and you didn't put on good underwear because you didn't listen to your mother? Like, the paramedics, they just call it in. They're like, no, nope, no. Nope. He's wearing those awful boxers again. Uh, doesn't you know? And he, they're just like, nope, gotta attack him. I mean, you go in, and they're like, no, we'll give you our, you know, lame Hanes brand of underwear. Standard I issue tagless. Think, I can honestly think of that one person, you know, that got in that car accident, and be like, oh, I better not call nine one one. I'm bleeding out because I got old underwear on. It's like, oh man, I, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I depend. I would think about that. I would be bleeding out and go, man, you guys are gonna have to see all of this. Oh no, it's got the streaks. It's cool, just let me die here. We'll all be happy. The you just, stains you know on what? both sides. Get me a salt tablet and some dirt. I'll be fine. I'll just rub some dirt in it. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, I just, yeah. Mm. So in I that sense, it's, it's not that strange. I mean, at least, at least hospital no, staff, no. people that are, you know, working for hospitals to attack your underwear, get it off, get rid of it. Because it's nasty, or they just need it in the way, you know? I mean, usually when I go to the hospital, I just plan on not wearing underwear just to make things easier. <laughs> oh, this guy went commando. You know what? We'll, we'll give him a 5% cut on his health care bill. <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice. That's a great yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's part uh, of Obamacare, of right? Do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you get a full 10 if you come in naked. <laughs> there you go. Now, my whole thing is like, you know... If they're attacking your underwear, I mean, what if like you go in and it has nothing to do with the lower half of your body and they they still just judge you? They're just like, hold on a second. And they just peek. Really, dude? Really? You, you, come on now. Whitey tidy. How old are you? Yeah, like, <laughs> God, does your mother dress you? <laughs> I mean. No. Yes. No. <laughs> no. I mean, I dress myself. She buys the clothes and makes sure that I wear them. But no. But I do it. I actually put it on myself. I, yeah. I mean, I put my initials on the back, you know, so I th that I know they're my clothes. I have an aunt that she works in the ER and she's told me some horror stories of the years. And oh boy. she's like, she goes, she goes, my favorite is when you see the really big buff, like macho men come in and you have to you ask them, you know, to strip down or whatever after an accident or you have to help them out. And she goes, and then you see the lacy red thong. And I was just like, yeah. And she goes, yep. Yeah. So I'm just thinking like, maybe there's times where you need to attack the underwear because it's like, Oh God! Oh. oh God! Why? Oh God! Oh God! Yeah, <laughs> I just <laughs> I don't know. Like you send in a, a, a bomb robot to take care of it because you oh. just can't. <laughs> yeah, because you know it's the bodybuilder guys can be pissed when he finds out. That was well, my I mean, favorite think pair. Of like, think of the robot though. Red, blue, you know, red G string, blue G string. Which do I pick? <laughs> Snips one. You know, just. <laughs> I just have to wonder what they named that robot. Uh, you know, you know, bomb disposal robot, and then you have the song the disposal robot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, I think we can pretty much settle that it's not that It'd be strange. Weird. But, I mean, it'd still be weird. I mean, like, depends on their whole attack form. Like, I mean, if they <laughs> send what in kind of you know, they fighters. Using? Yeah, I mean, if like they send in like red leader, or... <laughs> suppressive, <laughs> suppressive fire, you know, get the fire team going in. Yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah. So, huh. who knows? Who knows? Well, yeah. hospitals, if you attack my underwear, I will accept it as a natural course of life. I have a really lame underwear joke to end this on. Please do. All right. It's also because I'm a Marvel fan. Okay. Um, what kind of uh, underpants? Does Thor wear? Odin's hammer. <laughs> I didn't ask what's in his pants, and it's not Odin's hammer. It's Mjolnir. Hello. Anyways, no, he wears Thunderwear, but he likes to keep it low key. Anyways, <laughs> thank you. I'll be here all week.
<laughs> Corey, you look physically pained by my joke, and I think that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not I a first it. for me, but that, it's, that I, I, I felt it. <laughs> I felt it. Oh. I think I lost half a kidney there. Oh, no. Not we can take you to the hospital. <laughs> hey, yeah, they're going to attack your underwear first thing strip. when you get there. Yeah, I better strip before I go. Yep. Get that 5% off with Obamacare. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hey, let's move on to our stories. Should I go first? Yes. No. I don't want to hear about cat pee. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cat no. pee. We made a deal. It's almost like a slap bet. Like, if he does it, I go in there and I wail on him and I come back. And then that's when I poke your ribs and you just flail uncontrollably. <laughs> the visuals we give people. <laughs> Speaking of, so of thong robots. Uh, hey, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so getting it later, man. Uh, uh. Just saying, you better be wearing your sparkly thong when you end up in the hospital after today. Uh, that's my favorite. <laughs> Oh, no. It's fine. I've okay. never thrown up in my mouth on camera before. <laughs> All right. No, well, but what you got? What you got? Uh, what, I, what, what, what I got? What I got? Yeah. What I got? Okay. Well, this one is not particularly humorous. It, it's definitely more on the weird, just weird side. So I'm calling the story Love Beyond Life and Death. So... So we all know that, you know, when you lose somebody that you, you love or you're close to, it's, you know, it's a hard, difficult process, right? And th it's definitely, you know, for some cases, some people are able to deal with that better than others. And, well, in my particular story, there's one Belgian woman that had a particularly hard time moving on from that, you know, having a death, a very close member. So mm -hmm. a few days ago in the in an apartment in Liege, Belgium, um, Authorities found a 79-year-old Marcel H., who had died back in 2012 of a, an asthma attack. Now, mind you, that was back in 2012, I think November, late November of 2012. So, so they, a year ago? A year ago. She, they, she died, and they found her Actually, I think Marcel, a year later? A Marcel's no, actually it's, a guy. It's Marcel's a dude, yeah. Okay, found him a year later? A year later, after he had, he had died. And okay, just making sure I got that. Hide no, and seek no. world champion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So Must have cats. <laughs> so when they discovered, uh, when they got there, they discovered that since Marcel's death, which was as as Victoria was saying a year ago, his widow had been sleeping next to her husband's decomposing corpse for the last year. Throughout that whole year, she was sleeping. Mm, I don't know if it's that weird. I've heard of other people doing that. I mean, <laughs> oh well, there you have it, folks. I I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. This is pretty common common Next. practice at this point, I guess. <laughs> I mean, come well, on. I mean, people do that, and then they, you know, they get the checks every month in the mail and that type of thing too. Right now, I know there was actually uh, there's a Michigan woman that did the same kind of thing, and she was just yeah getting all the social security, and she was later charged with forgery, of course. <laughs> I can tell Victoria's gonna get married here soon, and then murder someone and uh, start. <laughs> I don't know whether to be like enlightened that hey I'm gonna get married soon or that I will end up murdering the person <laughs> for the social security I, checks. Yeah, for the social security oh. checks. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I thought it was interesting because you know he had been there for a whole year, so you would think that there would be some sort of odor or somebody would have noticed by you know at some point. But what'd she do? Just like don't, use that yeah. Febreze all over him? Right, Jesus. right. I think in Sweden they have the deluxe Plus, version of it. Lux. Sweden Deluxe, like the Ikea, you know, you build your own Febreze. Oh, boy. Yeah. Meatball flavored. So, oh. so <laughs> That's disgusting. But, so, so as I was saying, no one had noticed. The only reason they found out about it was because the landlord had, had pretty much told authorities, hey, this woman hasn't paid rent and stuff. So they went in and, because uh, no neighbors had reported of any bad smell. And that's partially because, actually, the, the body became mummified. Yeah. So, so, do you think she had one of those bags that you put the vacuum to and it like sucks it up? You know, <laughs> the self storage things. The closet saver. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Except in this like, case, it's the bed saver. Yeah. No. No. Oh. No. no? At least it's not I like just... all a lifesaver. 
okay, that one hurt me. Like, <laughs> oh, <good laughs> no, it's yeah. good. Oh, man. I just, mm, mm. Yeah. So, mm. and actually, uh, I sent you guys a link. This is not um, a picture of the actual guy. Now, for those of oh, you okay. that are a little queasy or not, yeah, are sensitive to this kind of stuff, I'm going to show a picture of a mummified body of actually, this I think was a case back in 1970, also in Belgium. And this is a man that I think had committed suicide. And they found him, I forgot how many weeks later, I think. I'm not sure if it was a couple months. But here's a picture of that. So let's move on to that real quick. So, oh man, he's pantsless. <laughs> like, notice that. Do you, you notice how was he, he in the hospital? In like a, like a comfortable. <laughs> they attacked situation. his underwear. What can I say? They attacked. Yeah, no, I just. Oh. But yeah, so he's he's mummified. So yeah, I don't know if I heard that. Did she get charged with anything? No, not at least not this. The widow that I was talking about in the story. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that it was just kind of a mental health issue. I think mostly. So, because I don't, as far as I know, you know, Social Security, I don't know Belgium, how they work with that stuff. But yeah, I think she just didn't want to let him go. Oh, don't when you see words like that, melted, though? liquefied. Yep. Yep. Because it look, yeah, the internal organs liquefy and then everything else. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. And I guess I think the smell is only initial. So. Oh, good. That's lovely. So yeah. when you yeah, know when I die, I'll only smell for a little bit. Yeah, and it's equated to the smell of garbage. Hey, you know, shoot. We always say it smells like something died in the trash chute out in our apartment. So now you know why. Because there's probably a dead guy in there. With all the college kids parting it up, wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. I just, like you. I mean, okay. All right. All right, Victoria's moment. Here we go. Beef jerky. I lost my father <laughs> five years ago, okay? And it took, it, it, it's really easy to cremate a body. My dad's cremated. I have his ashes here with me to add some, you know, macabre to this whole thing. But one, I don't sleep with them near me. Two, if murderers can get away with burning bodies so that there's no evidence... I think that somebody could get away with burning a body and still do the whole, oh, yeah, no, sure, he lives here kind of thing. I mean, yeah. so there's something there's something nefarious about this because, like, bleh. <laughs> Yeah, not a personal choice, not something I would do. So, but, you know, yeah, as that, Cor Corey, know. Was, Corey was saying, you know, it's, oh, you know. Beef jerky. Beef jerky. It's pretty normal. It's normal yeah. as beef jerky is what Corey's saying. Thank I you. Think. Hannibal I mean <laughs> he looks edible you know I, mm, um, yeah okay <laughs> you know I mean personally I'm not I'm not a big fan of, of human flesh I mean I'll wait the couple hundred years before Soylent Green becomes a thing but you know I just mm, just go to the Philippines to each their own. <laughs> I, yeah. Mm. Yeah. so Corey hopefully you have something a little more uh, light hearted than what I got Ah, uh, I'll try. Okay. I'll try so hard. So um, dead body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, mine's about a dead body. And no, I'm <laughs> just joking. Uh, mine's about a man who microwaved his PS4. That I'm really glad that didn't end in hamster. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like... So, I mean, as a, as a fellow gamer, Corey, I mean, do you see that as a waste? Microwaving a PS4? A brand new PS4 just came out. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily put it against me. I might have done something like that. I mean, it's not like I've put weird Can a PS4 there. fit in a microwave? Yeah. No, I wouldn't know. I mean, if I mean they get things there. pretty compact nowadays. Corey, I Anyways. heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy uh, cooks it and he puts it on YouTube, puts the video up on YouTube. I don't know if Weston's going to be able to put it up or he might be able to put it in the comments or something. I have, a, I, have a, I have a still shot of the giant microwaving machine <laughs> thing that you were talking about. Yeah, that was so weird. Yeah, and like it's made crazy. out of wood. <laughs> Did you notice that? It, like, you no, I didn't. Up the door and it's like made out of wood. Huh. So... The PS4 took a whole whopping one minute and 44 seconds to burst into flames. Woo! 
uh, which he's got 60,000 viewers of the video. Obviously, he's making a little bit of money off that. The guy's an artist. <laughs> and he took the PS4 afterwards and sold it on eBay. Guess how much he sold it for? 500. Victoria. No, it's going to be some stupid outlandish number that's only going to tick me off. So, no, I'm not guessing. <laughs> no, I want to hear you guess. I want to hear it. What did you say, Weston? 500? I said 500. I'll go with almost 1,000. $11,151. The greatest thing was... You guys need to open. It was you carefully just, marked the console as non-working. Uh, that's good. Well, you, put you it never on know. The eBay like, oh, cool. Melted PS4 that works. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think it would have worked even after the couple of seconds in there. But uh, the video is kind of interesting, and the guy is definitely interesting looking. Uh... <laughs> I would hope he, so. He, he puts most homeless people to, uh, they usually look very much better than him. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, Lovely. Actually, I did notice, I think at I'm, the end of the video, he added not only the PS4, but he had a couple of other items to throw into that mix. Yeah, he uh, included, he cooked an iPhone 5S, or 5C, sorry, 5S, I don't know where that came from. I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. <laughs> Xbox 360, Nintendo 3DS. And, uh, yeah, this guy seems like he's a very popular man of melting things uh, on YouTube and selling them as art. Always got to have somebody to do it. Yeah, I mean, you know why? All my hair is gone. I sold all my hair, so, you know. Did you melt it first? Yeah. <laughs> and I put it in an ice cube tray and sold it. Nice. Good idea. Was the ice cube tray melted? Uh, no, no. Oh, I could have gotten top dollar for that. Yeah. This Guys, is, okay, this just it's proves weird. to me. No, this <laughs> just proves that that people are insane. Like To buy uh, the stuff or to of, melt the stuff? Uh, yes. I don't know if it's insane. Just, if the, just, just, if the yes. guy's got a lot of follower, uh, followers. Foul. Yeah. <laughs> followers. Followers. <laughs> come, here, come here, followers. Yeah. <laughs> so do uh, cults, guys. Yeah, don't drink the Kool Aid. Uh, yeah, oh, this, no. this Kool Aid, this this Kool Aid right here. Don't put drink it in it. the microwave first. Okay, that's where my hair is at. Do not drink it. Wait, it's I think your hair in is there. in my Kool Aid with the ice cubes that are melted with the PS4 melted plastic. You know what? That needs to be the. That's the name of my new band. <laughs> hair in my Kool Aid. Hair in my Kool. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just mm, eleven grand. <laughs> Chump change. Yeah, I mean, you could. There's not enough face to palm ratio here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you can be crazy and make some money. I guess. So I guess it's not that weird because people are, uh, or maybe it is. It's weird enough so people are gonna buy the art. You know what I mean? Oh, it's art. Uh, it's art. Well, that's that's, that's that's what he's considering it as. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. The minute you put quotations around something, I lose all credibility towards it. So, okay. art. <laughs> yeah well when i yeah. used to work in an art museum you find a lot of that stuff and then they go that's a lot of worth art yeah. a million dollars and you're like what and then you just kick it <laughs> <laughs> not anymore oh now it's even more brilliant yeah oh, God. you can see worth the conflict more. happening inside the piece because it's broken oh man now. then clearly clearly i've been missing out on selling the carnage from every meal i've ever had <sighs> here i go <laughs> I don't know. I think my uh, one of the grossest things when I worked in the art museum was uh, when we had actually really expensive paintings, we would have a little barricade around it so people wouldn't go up and like, touch it. Right, right. Well, that doesn't help when people flick boogers on them. <laughs> I thought that was just, you know, dried paint. Yeah, no. Oh. So All you... of wow. similar tint and color. Well, and like, I mean... <laughs> I'm not speaking from experience. I'm speaking from expertise. When you flick a booger and you want it to stick, there's only so much you roll it. Like, you got to know when to stop rolling because you got oil on your hand and you just got to know when to flick it. Like, yeah, I don't mind flicking boogers at that PS4, though. Ah, uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Victoria, 
what do you yeah. have? Do you have do you have some more PS4 stuff that you want to talk about? Get off your get off your chest. No, no, no. I'm good. No, I'm, guys, I'm. I'm good. just gonna I'm good wallow in the fact that I'm like gonna be you know, twelve grand in debt for going to you know getting a higher education while that I could have just been melting you know video game consoles and selling them on eBay as art. Anyways, uh, no, I, I'm in an art of filmmaking. Yep. Yeah, you are. Yeah. So whatever. Well, well I'll watch me make money on that when I'm 80. Uh, Better late <laughs> no, than never. No, my story. Yeah. No, my Work story has something to do that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna start like microwaving my Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> All that would zero be awesome. of them. You, would, would you know, but I'll send. You know what? That. If I get one before Leonardo DiCaprio, I'll send one to him <laughs> free of charge. Okay. Uh. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this when I'm older. Uh, so the no, world my story. Needs to know. Oh, not this again. Yeah, that's, that's so, it. That's all. I'm done. <laughs> my story um, is actually has to do with our lovely coast. In fact, my uh, Weston's in my hometown of San Diego, and um, San Diego. Yes, yeah, for you English speakers. <laughs> English speakers. Um, so yeah, no. Uh, so this 18 foot long, it's one of two that have been caught on the West Coast. It's called an oar fish. Um, Weston, if you have the picture, um, I did send you the link. Yeah. So um, there's some lovely people holding this long fish. It is the longest bony fish. Everybody take a moment to immaturely laugh at that. <laughs> um, it is the, yeah, so the longest fish so far discovered in the ocean that um, when they say bony fish, they mean that uh, fish, unlike sharks, that are made with cartilage. Uh, so it's a fish that actually has bones. Um, so the whale shark is still the largest of all the, um, all the ichthyological, which means fish, uh, mm -hmm. in, in the ocean. So, um, but it's still, it's still pretty huge. Now what they did was they sent both, uh, uh fish carcasses cause they've just washed up on the shore dead, uh, during like high tides and stuff. Um, so they've sent both to different universities. So like, uh, for instance, the University of California, Santa Barbara did some research on it, as nice. well as a marine biologist from Cal State University, Fullerton. What, what? What, what? Um, they've been working on that too. And what they've just, what they did like at an autopsy. Well, yeah, they call it a necropsy because I guess it's after it's been dead a while. I don't uh, know. Hmm. They cut up in the fish and they went in and looked at it and, um, uh, the Catalina, the Catalina Island Marine Institute had the other one. So anyways, they all cut into it and they're looking at it. So one of them they found in its digestive tract was a spiny headed worm, which is a tiny little parasite that attaches itself and basically feeds off of a host. And it's just one of your, you know, typical scary underwater parasites. So like Weston. A little bit. Yeah. He's more like, he's more like almost back to having an Afro headed worm. But that's true. Um, yeah, no, put enough gel, he'd be spiny headed. But so they uh, so they found it and they're like, well, you know, parasites hop from host to host throughout their life cycle. So they're pretty sure that this worm was mature. And it suggests the just the autopsy suggests that the oarfish must have just eaten the host that it was on, like maybe some krill or a deep water crustacean. And so the second one, okay, so that was the 18 foot long one. The yeah. second one that they found, um, they sent it to the Scripps Institution of Oceanography and researchers were looking at it and they're like, okay, so it's only 14 feet long. And this little guy, um, well, excuse me, this little lady, uh. she had hundreds of thousands of eggs inside her six foot long ovaries. Talk about your cramps. Oh. I'm just saying. I'm sorry and for so, all the women out there. Six right? feet. Right? Cause dang, <laughs> but so anyways, um, I mean, <sighs> um, so what they're saying is that they're still not sure on the cause of death. Um, so CSI, you know, ocean hasn't figured it out yet, but, uh, <laughs> we just don't. they are, no. yeah, they're still working on, um, oh, excuse me. A necropsy is an animal version of an autopsy. Ah. Um, figured that out. No. Okay. So th what they're saying is that, uh, the fish were quite fresh when they were found. So meaning uh, time of death wasn't that far between when they washed up on shore and the actual time of death. That's convenient. So what they're saying is that they're like, and they're, they're figuring out is that these huge fish, they look like they would be really good swimmers, you know, because their whole body is one big tail, it looks like. No, it turns out that all they do is float in the water and they have these little paddles for fins and they just kind of hover. That sounds and fun. I'm just like, right. And I'm just like, this really big fish just kind of does this. Like, 
could be, you know, the coolest, like, next thing to Cthulhu sea monster thing. But no, no, it just kind of floats. And you're it just like... It's large okay. fish. And it's tiny Could you just fans. imagine? Like, I see Liam Neeson going, release the Kraken. And then there's just this derp fish that's, like, 14 feet long going, sup? I can't move. That's about all it is. I've released my, my Kraken. This is it. I'm not going anywhere. Right? Um, and so what they're saying is that, like, they're still trying to figure out, like, uh, you know, what basically what killed them. Um, they're doing chemical analysis of the lipids and the proteins in its diet and trying to figure out where it fits in the food chain. Um, and so because it's still an ongoing thing, like as of right now, they're still working on it. The marine biologist from our university is still working on it. Uh, they're saying that they, they're looking to learn some more about this fish, but that so far they've figured out that it's pretty much like a big snake that just kind of floats in the water, nice. well, in the deep water. Yeah. As long as you're not so Indiana it's Jones, just, you should be okay. <laughs> uh, I don't like it snakes. Just, it just and like this thing, this oarfish reminds me of the shrieking eels from Princess Bride. Right. Um, and that's like it looks like. Yeah, no, it looks like it. So I mean, you got that going for it. But hmm. they they live around the Gulf of Mexico and apparently do make it into the higher Pacific waters, like towards San Diego and Huntington Beach area and stuff like that too. So we'll see what else comes up before it, but just. These things are huge and they're creepy. And it's weird because, I mean, six foot long ovaries? <laughs> like, yeah, no, that's cool. Whatever you want. Now, is it bad that the first thing I thought when I saw the picture of them holding it, like, you know, that's what they always do with the big game fish. And I, right. I just, the first thing I thought was, I wonder if it tastes good. Yeah. I you know what? Yeah. The same. I mean, you, you guys on the same boat there? Or was I, am I just crazy? Yeah. No, no. I mean, it's it's the American in us, guys. Too, and then I saw the picture at the top where it's like kind of like looks like. <laughs> <laughs> that is my oh. impression of an oarfish. <laughs> yeah. No, it's. Uh, I mean, but then again, have you really looked at some of the faces of the animals we eat? Like, especially especially fish. Like you have go you down to the south. Into the face of the animal that you're eating. Have you ever looked in the eyes of the animal you just killed as you eat it? <laughs> it's weird to eat a burger in front of a cow like they stare at you <laughs> right yeah uh it reminds me of being in south carolina on the cow pasture outside my grandpa's house that belonged to his neighbors and the one cow just <laughs> look at me and i'd be like i'd, be, I'd just be eating and, like a, I, w I would throw carrots to it or whatever but i'd be eating and just going man you guys like you guys taste good <laughs> you know just saying more. Like, let me do a shout out to you and your species. <laughs> Delish. <laughs> when I uh, lived right outside of Philadelphia, there was this place that everyone would go to. And had a petting zoo there. <laughs> they had pigs and all types of things. And oh, no. a good portion of those were on the menu. <laughs> so you'd of order course. it. And you'd be sitting outside in these little picnic tables and stuff. And then you look over and there's Wilbur and as you're eating his cousin. <laughs> No, you know what cracks me up is that, like, that seems worse than when you go to Red Lobster and have to pick out your lobster. Like, is it because it's just a big ocean cockroach? And, like, so you don't feel as much pain? The or... Just throw them in the boiling so. water. I mean... Let's go for it. I you just got... think of the episode of The Simpsons where Lisa becomes a vegetarian, and she dreams, like, she, she vision, envisions a little sheep, and it's all, Lisa, don't eat me. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, Lisa. The yeah, no. I just, mm. just meat is too good. <laughs> yeah. Meat is too good for oh. that to happen. I'm sorry. I just that. I'm sorry. All respect. It is. Yeah, no. Like all respect to whatever you eat. You know, I am the epitome of an omnivore, and my whole thing is that if we weren't supposed to eat meat, then it wouldn't have been made so tasty. Just saying. I I I, I don't know about that. Up. Oh, what? I mean, you haven't oh. tried other humans, right? So I mean. Not yet, but I've been told on good authority, you, to try some human jerky. So, um, could you imagine? It'd be really funny if a guy's like nickname was Beef. You're all, hey, I'm eating beef jerky. Uh, 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 uh. Thank you. There's a reason I'm here why all there's week. no such thing as phone booths anymore. <laughs> and with that, we are out of time. <laughs> I love, I love how we end sometimes. It's just great. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. it's great. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, thank you for watching. Please hit that like button, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this podcast. And of course, please share it. Tell your friends, your strangers that you meet on the street, whoever. Just tell everybody about this your podcast. Your grandmother. Your grandmother would love grandmother. to watch this. Your dead, you know, husband or wife that's just hanging out with you while you're watching this. They got nothing better yeah. to do. Yeah. As far as please I'm send mean. us some human beef jerky, by the way. Now we go laser tagging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. I, I was saying that they had, the guy had nothing better to do, but you know, maybe she maybe she picks him up and goes out does outings with him. I don't please know. Please laser tag. <laughs> well, well the poor thing, he's probably dead tired anyway. <laughs> All right, Thank that was you. the rest of my kidney. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good thing I was born with three. And of course, have a wonderful Thanksgiving because this week yes. there's Thanksgiving will be on Thursday. And good luck with the shopping if you guys are Black Friday shoppers at all. Stay safe. Stay I mean, safe. and if worst comes to worst, just go on eBay and find some art. <laughs> yeah, go buy a PS4 I mean, and melt it. Melt. It. I was gonna say. If your little kid really wants a PS4 and you just, you know, he didn't say he didn't want it melted. I mean, Specifics. Yeah. Details, details. I'm just saying. If you're going to do that, hey. you might as well melt the Christmas tree at the same time, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Brown, holidays. Melty Christmas uh, tree. So, yes, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we will see you guys next Sunday at 3 p.m. PST. So, Hasta la pasta. Stay weird, and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye, guys.